What's going on guys? This is Martyrs Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Dark Souls PvP. Alright guys, this is the third and final video of the Just Another Day in the Berg Volume 2. All right. And first and foremost I'd like to give a shout out and actually I did it at the end of uh, part two of the series, but I'd like to do it again. Uh, Excuse me. I'd like to give a shout out to good old Hail Servant 23. Um, uh, he's another YouTube uploader who also have his own streams. Right, so if you guys want to check out some good PvP action, um, not only on the YouTube uploads, but also you know on the streams, you know maybe you might want to PvP him or to participate in some of his fight clubs. Um, go ahead and check out his channel. Right, he's a good player, and he uploads a lot of good material. Now, um, since I'm on the topic, you know, once again, I like to uh, give an invite to all of you guys, you know, that are kind of some hotshot players, you know, or at least think you are. You know, if you kind of want some real competition, right? And we're not talking about competition, meaning the tryhards, right? The tryhards, you know, who's desperate to win we're not talking about those type of guys but we're talking about real players you know players who don't back fat uh, don't backstab fish you know they won't be uh, spamming any wrath of the gods they won't be doing any of that they basically try to play you know um, according to their builds of course but you know they, they, they basically try to engage by using a good variety of tactics right without having to rely heavily on backstabs or some of these other uh, type of what some would consider cheap tactics. Right. All right. So, um, looks like we're in a situation where uh, I was summoned or I invaded. I can't really remember. And, I mean, I guess the host want me to kind of try to tackle some people. Right, try to tighten them up, take care of them. So we'll see how long this is going to last. Okay, my bad, dude. Okay, go ahead, turn my back to him, give him an opportunity to heal. All right, and you know what? I really wish that you know there was some form of communications uh, because things like that are not intentional. You know, there's really no need for me to attack the guy. You know, we don't need any cheap shots in the brigade. But, you know, I guess he just want to take his 100 point loss. Was it 100 points? 114 points? You know, I guess, okay, I guess this guy's, okay, I guess he's kind of like a boss type. Okay, this guy's trying to kill off the invader. Come on, dude, get off it. Okay, and he has a dagger, so I probably need to be careful because more than likely he has a hornet ring. In most cases. Okay, but didn't have that much vitality. Let's go ahead and engage now. Just checking out this guy, this guy's build. I'm assuming he is a mage build. Now, someone may say, "Come on, dude! How can you just look at somebody and tell that they're a, a mage?" Well, I'm kind of looking at his equipment. All right? Looks like he was wielding a uh, Velka's rapier. Right? And when I say his, I'm talking about the other red phantom. So we'll see. Looks like a Velka's rapier. I could be wrong. But just by looking at the handle on it, it looked like it was Vel Velkas. Now, I don't know why this guy doesn't come down here. And this is why I'm kind of irritated. You know, um, this is not a stream. You know, no one advised me ahead of time. So, come on, dude. I'm here to invade. Try to break off this host if I get an opportunity. Now, once again, I have to fight one of these diehard buff builds. The reason why I call them diehard tryhards is because usually they rely too heavily 
on the buff. I mean, it's kind of like the buff is like a false confidence, right? And you can tell. And the reason why I say that is because in a lot of cases, the buff users, you know, what they'll do is, you know, once they buff, they'll just start running up to you and spamming their R1. Right? They don't really care about getting parried. You know, they don't really care about any of that. They just start spamming their R1. So that's why I say it's basically a try hard for the most part, because are they really trying to incorporate anything other than relying heavily on the strength of that buff? Not in my experience. I mean, most of them, they don't really try any tactics other than hack and slash, right? Which is not wrong with it, right? I used to be a hack and slash type of dude. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure most of us started off as kind of hack and slash, you know, spamming our one type deals. All right, so we're back at it. So let's see, is this guy, okay, he's got his shield up, so let's see, is he gonna be a turtle with his rapier, or he just kinda has it up for the sake of having it? Let's see. Well, maybe he's not a turtle. Okay, well that's cool. So let's see, is he going to go ahead and cast any of his high-speed sorceries? Right, because we already see that he's using the Velkas, so let's just see what he's going to do with it. And actually, he's not doing anything. So I probably need to... Okay, tighten this guy up, because he wasn't really doing anything. Alright, nice parry. GG, dude. Now... Um, seeing the situation that I'm in, right, I've just been summoned, and actually this is a perfect example of the justification for having a lot of um, divine blessings, right, because, you know, granted, a lot of you guys who watch my channel may not necessarily PvP as much as I do, right, uh, even if you do PvP, perhaps you do not host like I do. Perhaps you're not in a situation where you just sit there and, you know, have to fight off several people, you know, in one match like I do. Which is why, you know, it may be kind of a strange thing for you for me to have a lot of divine blessings, right? But I have them because I mean, I'm just that type of guy. <laughs> right? It is what it is. I mean, because think about it. This is technically the third person that I have fought. And this is just one invasion. And even though it wasn't a formal thing, I mean, this guy is not a stream. I just kind of got lucky um, during this particular time. Right? To be in a situation where the host is like, no, dude, I'll just kind of summon somebody and kind of see what you can do with it. Now, when I first fought this guy, um, to the extent that you guys are familiar with Pep, I really thought about watching his play style that this is Pep. Right, but it's not this guy. Um, I mean, unless he's using some kind of hidden name. But I doubt he does that. He don't really need to do that. But the way this guy plays is almost like Pep. To the extent that you guys are familiar with Pep's good old claws build. You know. And actually I fought him another time where he used the same build and he kind of got me. Now, that fight is not featured in this. This was kind of like on a different uh, a different day, but we we're in Dark Root. And the same guy just so happened to be there. Right, so shout out to the good old uh, Pep imitation. <laughs> right, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm not going to do that. Shout out to that guy with the high-speed claws. All right, so let's see what the host is going to bring to the table. I've had uh, three good matches. And he's rocking the high speed brass armor with what looks like the. Uh, what's that? The steel helm? Okay. Well, that's a kind of groovy tactic. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, the reason why I say it's groovy is because. This guy has had an opportunity to watch me fight three persons, right? And this is kind of why 
I don't like these situations. In other words, he knows that I'm a barrier. And because he knows that I'm a barrier, this is why he continues to kick. Now, unfortunately, in some of those cases, you know, he is able to, you know, kick me backward. Right? Whereas I would normally, you know, kind of take the the kick and to the extent that I am not pushed back I would parry right after the kick knowing that the kick in most cases will be followed up with an attack and I kind of learned that from good old uh, short dude right because in the beginning uh, when I used to play that guy you know you know with his constant parrying I used to say you know what I'm getting tired of this guy parrying me so I started off with the kicks and actually it was effective for a little while until that guy just kind of came up with a new tactic and said, you know what? Okay, I know what I'll do. Since I know he's going to follow up the kick with an attack, I'll just absorb the kick and then parry. And he used to land those too. Right, so that's when a, that's a good high-speed tactic that I kind of got from him. Just like I did right there. Did you guys just notice it? Right, he kicked, but he wasn't able to push me backward. And then right after that move, I went on ahead and parry, and I got lucky to land it. Alright. Good old hell servant. I guess he's got his onion head built. And I really have to well, be careful. <laughs> right? Because he's got that high speed great axe. And what I'm thinking is, he's probably a uh, dexterity build that uses pyromancy um, but he just that was a that was a very nice parry that was a good parry I definitely didn't see that coming and you know what sometimes um, I kind of take people for granted and I'm not talking about good old hell servant right here I'm talking generally speaking you know, a lot of times when I kind of go through a few matches without getting parried, a lot of times I get kind of sloppy myself. All right, which kind of brings me to a new topic. Um, one thing that I have noticed myself is that, you know, sometimes when you play a lot against some really good players, it can kind of tighten your game up, right? It can definitely tighten your game up. Um, and because a lot of these good players usually play by certain rules, it causes you to come up with tactics other than the hack and slash or, you know, the backstab fishing, right? And this is kind of uh, when my game started to evolve for the most part. You know, when I start to play, you know, when I got to got to the point to where I would start playing, you know, kind of short dude, you know, and I keep, I hate to keep bringing that guy's name up, but I mean, hell, we fight all the time, right? Um, you know, guys like short dude, some of these other guys who stream, you know, a lot of them are kind of into the listen. You know, there's no fishing for backstabs, you know, there's no, you know, spamming attacks, there's no none of that. And when you're forced to play under those conditions, you have to learn different tactics, right? So there is a benefit to playing against a lot of these streamers, right? And actually, I would call them a community. Uh, and the reason why I would call them a community, because actually, I think a lot of people use that word community loosely. You know, I know a lot of the guys who are kind of in the forums or some of the guys in the Honor Brigade. You know, they always use the word the Dark Souls community kind of loosely, right? But let me kind of define what I consider to be a community, right? I don't think that just because a lot of people do something together that therefore they are a community. I don't believe that. You know, because I heard a lot of guys say, well, the community has determined this. Now, I mean, what exactly what they meant by quote unquote the community, I don't know. But in my opinion, a community is a group of persons within a population that basically have shared values, shared beliefs, and all work toward the same goal. Right? So, in other words, 
Just because a lot of people PvP doesn't mean that all the PvPers are a community. It just simply means, you know, there's a lot of people who PvP. Now, what do I consider a community? Well, one example would be a lot of the guys who frequent the forums. Now, the reason why I would consider the forum dudes a community is because a lot of times they communicate with each other, they share ideas, they bounce ideas off each other, and most of them, you know, have relatively decent ties with each other. Uh, another example of a community would be the streamers, in my personal opinion. Mainly because, you know, a lot of times, okay, I think that's a horny ring, just by looking at the animation of that backstab. Um, okay, so back to what I was saying. Uh, I think the streamer dudes, you know, either the ones who stream or the ones who follow the streams, are a community. Because for the most part, you know, they have shared values. They have a lot of things in common. You know, they all frequent the stream. They all communicate with each other. And they have a good sense of rapport with each other. So I would consider a lot of those guys a community. And back to what I was talking about. Once you kind of get matched up with that particular community, in my personal opinion, your game will definitely evolve. And this is one of those dudes who's kind of hunting for a role, B, as you can tell, because at first he was just fighting straight up, but now that I've impaired him, you know, he's just kind of doing this ridiculous constant flip. This is annoying. See? They can't do anything without that backstab. Whatever, dude. Um, like I was saying, once you meet up with that particular community... I am of the opinion that your game will definitely evolve, right? Because mine definitely has, um, and, and I, I can tell because, as I've said before, whereas before I relied heavily on critical attacks, for the most part backstabs, right? I do not play that way as I've done in the past, right? And this is largely because I have, you know, been playing with a lot of the guys who say, hey, listen, these are the rules by which we play. You know, we don't play by this, we don't play by that, you know, all that backstabbing, we don't go for it. So, you know, if you kind of want to play with us, you're going to have to come up with a new tactic. And it forced me to change my playing styles. And this is why, you know, a lot of times I say, hey, if some of you guys think you're kind of a hot shot, why don't you go ahead and check out the Twitch streams, right? Because you have the Invader, You've got um, Barney. Uh, shout out to all these guys. You have Hell Servant. I know he has a stream. You have Mr. Bushido Wright. You have a lot of these guys. Right? And sometimes you'll even catch the brigade. Now, I won't be streaming, but will I be on there participating? Yeah, you'll catch me on there sometimes. And actually, that's where, you know, whenever I get fed up with PvPing in the Berg, I'll just kind of go check out the streams just to see where a lot of the hotshot players are. Right, because um, I know the other night, um, good old Hill Servant, he had a nice little fight club down in, uh, where was it, the catacombs. And it was an awesome experience, right? I know I enjoyed myself, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the people who were there also enjoyed themselves. You know, because I'm of the, of the opinion that the Dark Souls slash Demon Souls community and I mean the collective community. I don't mean a specific group within the players. I'm saying the collective group of players are pretty much very loyal <laughs> to this franchise. Right? A lot of the die-hard PvPers, they definitely love this game. And they should. Right? There's a lot of good reasons to like this game. I think it's an awesome franchise. Alright, so enough about um, improving your game. So yeah, now, um, this is kind of a build that I experimented with, and I kind of got the inspiration from good old Brody, shout out to Brody, um, and basically I had a battle of the build series with Brody, and I kind of did my own little tweaking with the build, and um, now, based upon my usage of the build, one thing that I did not like is that... Uh, because of the 
stat requirements. You know, I needed 50 in faith, and I needed 45 in uh, 45 in dexterity. I really did not have a lot of room to uh, wear heavier equipment, right? For which to have, you know, more defense. Because actually, this black uh, witch's cloak, you know, the whole armor set is pretty, pretty weak. Right? As a matter of fact, I think I have less than 300. And I, as a matter of fact, I think it's around 230 defense. Especially with as, as low humanity that I have. So, I mean, it really sucked. I mean, these guys, like, one blow would take, like, I don't know, like, almost half of my vitality. It was, it was ridiculous. Right? So, I mean, I think it's a good build. But, you know, to the extent that you want to use it, you're definitely going to have to go past uh, 125, right? Because this build right here is a 130, and I didn't even have that much fatality at 130. As a matter of fact, I think um, at this point I only have like 1,400 fatality. Now, granted, it's strong, but with regard to having high, because, I mean, check this out. I'm fighting a guy with full giants. Right, and I'm not saying anything about the build. I'm just kind of demonstrating the weaknesses of it based upon the way that I created it. Now, um, I probably could create the build using different. See, that guy's just poised right through that. And this is why I say that poise is basically okay in a nice chain BS. Why am I not surprised? These guys are desperate. Um. Okay, shout out to good old Sky. He's one of those guys that kind of check out the streams every now and then. We have another buff user. I'm starting to think everybody and their mother uses buffs. <laughs> that crap is unnecessary. I really do not need to hide behind a buff. Now, I'm not saying that this guy is doing it. But I'm just saying, I mean, I don't know. It is what it is. That's his build, so he can go ahead and rock it. But me personally, I don't need a buff to compensate for for anything. Right? I can tighten you up with my basic weapons. Don't need a buff. And actually, I can probably... And actually, I do have some faith builds and some sorcery builds. But even with those builds, I almost never use a buff. And actually, you know, the next video series, I might just use a buff build. Alright, since I'm sitting here talking about it. As a matter of fact, I might work on that next week. So perhaps next week's uploads will include a build with no buffs. Now, we're back at it with Sky. And he kind of messaged me. He said, hey, dude, I told that guy to take off the full giants and to not to use the buff. So we're going to see what kind of hotshot you think you are. Right. So, you know, this is kind of me again, uh, more evenly matched in this particular case. Right. Because the guy does not have the false security of his full giants. Right. So I got my get backs. You know, here's another situation where I'm fighting off several people. Thus, the many divine blessings. Right? For all you guys who are saying, Oh, you have an unfair advantage. It's not an unfair advantage. Dude, I fight a lot. Get over it. Alright. So here we come with another invader. Okay, what is this guy doing? Okay, well, maybe they kind of had an arrangement from earlier, and he's kind of confused as to what's going on. I don't know. But if he doesn't come out and fight, I mean, I'm just going to disappear. I'm not going to you know, just kind of sit here and wait for nothing. Okay, he's coming out. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's see what we got. All right, looks like a Moonlight Greatsword. So I need to be careful. Right, because I definitely do not have high defense. If you guys notice, I'm using the Dark Moon Bolt with the Moonlight Arrows. Got a nice parry there. All 
right? And try to tighten him up with the uh, great lightning spear. And that's one of those miracles that I think a lot of people do not use. Man, I almost caught him with it. All right, but he got me first. You guys notice how much vitality that I'm down. Come on, dude. And actually, next blow like that, I might be finished. All right, so let's see what we got. Actually, I got lucky on that one. Because actually, I think that probably would have been a kill for the both of us. I don't know. All right, now, um, you guys may be wondering, hold on, dude, why'd you kind of skip out on that? Well, I mean, good old Sky will verify for you that we kind of got trolled pretty hard. And I didn't stick around trying to chase that guy. I mean, some guy was kind of on the rooftop, you know, kind of throwing those fire bombs at us. It was getting annoying. He was trolling us for like 10 minutes. And I just decided to leave. All right, we all right so it looks like we have another try-hard build trying to hunt me down with his little buff. And that's why I did the counter to what he was doing. You know, he was kind of circling me, so I counter-circled him. He just did it again. All right. And I really have to be careful, right? Because I have some low defense on this build. You guys see that? He is eating away at my vitality. All right, so let's see what we can do. Keep the distance off. All right, so this is the last match of the three-part series. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the commentary. This is the last match against good old Sky. And one thing about Sky, he's one of the kind of like those flipper guys, right? And I'm, I'm not even on that level. He's like way past me. I'm not really into the constant flips, and he's really good with that, right? Because uh, I think this is like the second or third time I've played him, and he kind of tightened me up every time. Not only that, he's using a Faith Mage build, right? Well, it is what it is. You guys can check out the match. All right. Catch you next time. Martyr's Brigade is